A very good afternoon to all. In continuation with agronomy discipline, in the second session of day two, I warm welcome to Miss Putram Lam Gambi. She is a PhD scholar from Cheshmei Stefan Ashiaja, Hungary. For this, he, she is awarded through Stefanium. Hungarian scholarship from the Hungary government. She did her master's through MPKV Rahoy, cleared her ASRB net agronomy in 2017. She has published book on hydroponic, the advanced technology for fodder production. She has also published book chapters, written many popular articles, research papers and review papers. She is also awarded by Best Master Thesis Award in 2018. She stood runner-up in 10th Maharashtra State Research Convention Avishkar in 2015. Let's welcome the farthest foreign land speaker, Ms. Mutum, as she is around 5,214 kilometers away to deliver her lecture on Israeli as important as irrigation. Very all the best to all students. Stay tuned with Miss Mutum and learn from her lecture. So my greetings to all of the people uh, joining this session. First and foremost, my special appreciation to the faculties of Dr. Kane Modi University for giving me this prestige platform uh, and giving a keynote to, uh, related to agriculture approaches. And when at first I got the invitation, I was reluctant whether to accept this wonderful opportunity or not. But uh, because you know i'm also a phd scholar a student like many of you all now uh, even though i was uh in this teaching profession back then a year ago so uh i i think i it was better for me to grasp the opportunity so it was time for me to select the topic so i when i was thinking about selection of topic i was reflecting back then I realized that last year uh, there was some kind of abnormalities in the rainfall condition. The eastern region, which usually have very high rainfall, had uh, almost drought condition. And whereas in the uh, western region, there was flood condition. So with this situation, there arises the need for uh, water, manage water management or the water resource management. But often when we say of water resource management, we think of irrigation. But yes, of course, there is also another part besides irrigation, which is often, often underrated. And to give an equal status to this inequality, I have chosen the topic uh, with the baseline on drainage. So it is my topic, is drainage as important as irrigation? To gear up the station, let's first get on to the bottom line of the term that is drainage. So what do you mean by Oh, oh yeah it's here sorry sorry to disturb in between yeah so i came up with this topic drainage so when we look into what is drainage there are lots of questions to be asked uh, ask like well how much you know about drainage why is this drainage required um is there any one particular method of drainage or there are lots of methods and uh does this 
drainage effect, crop production, as much as irrigation. These are some of the, you know, overview that we need to know when it comes to a drainage. And I think there is some kind of problem with the screen. Yeah, yes, drainage. So I told you that let's gear up with some points regarding drainage. Jal Nikash, that is the Hindi term for drainage. So it means we are going to remove the excess water from the surface as well as from the from the subsurface. Next slide, then now that our next slide, please, Bolivar. Okay. So when it comes to drainage, it is the removal of the excess water surface and the subsurface water. To do what? It is mostly for the enhancement of crop growth, including the removal of the dissolved salts. Is it that drainage does not occur in our nature? Yes, drainage do occur in our nature, but you know it is not so sufficient to you know, support the uh, uh, large population or the large activities that is taking on. So we go for artificial drainage. In artificial drainage also there are different methods like the conventional method of drainage or the non-conventional. So in conventional, it will be the generally practiced methods of drainage. Whereas in the non-conventional, it will be the you know not so popular method like the tile drain or uh, you know the other methods like the mold drain and uh, bio drainage these are some of the few non-conventional things but uh, leave it behind because we are going to discuss mostly on artificial drainage or the general uh, drainage system in common next slide so conditions that arises from poor drainage as the topic says what can the what are the conditions that can arise from a poor drainage system you might have seen, uh, you know, like ponding, water ponding, salinization, water logging. These are some of the conditions that can arise. But how to differentiate between them? Ponding is easily identified. You see, when there is excess water in the picture itself, also you can see, when there is excess water on the surface of the soil, you see uh, that's a ponding, ponded condition. And, and when uh we say what the logging they may you might find them synonymous words but they are not there's slight difference between the two in water logging it usually denotes uh high excess water in the root zone when the root zone is submerged in excessive water at that time only we call it water logging so all ponded waters may have a water log condition but not all waterlogged conditions be a water ponded condition. So next slide. So this is a condition of water logging. Here you see in the picture, like saturated soil, saturated soil, non-saturated non -saturated condition. When there is rainfall, the water table rises, rising to the condition of uh, up to the level of the root zone. So how do we know that there is excessive uh, moisture contained in the root zone? How do we identify water logging? Because we cannot see with our eyes. So at that time, what we can do is take an auger. Take an auger, you pierce a hole, and when you do, uh, dig a hole, you will see the water level. You measure the depth of the water level, and at the same time, you can make you yourself will know what type of crop you are growing. If you are gro growing shallow rooted plant uh, or deep rooted plant, we can you can easily identify because when the root depth is 20 centimeter, suppose 20 centimeter, whereas the water table you have measured through by making a auger is 60 centimeter, then the plant is safe enough because there is a wide difference between the two layer between the water level and the root layer so that is the point you don't need to go for any soil uh, moisture testing uh, 
procedure, long procedure. We don't need to go for any of those. So next is the, sorry, next. Uh, so next, please, forward. No, 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 next, next. Yeah, so next is the salinization. In salinization, what you see is that uh, when they're in arid and semi-arid regions, these are usually seen. So in that condition, what happened is when we irrigate uh, with uh, groundwater or any surface water, the water, because of the heat, high heat, they get evaporated, leaving behind the soluble salts. And these soluble salts, they form a layer, a, a non-permeable layer, because of which there is problem in the aeration of the soil. And eventually it will affect the plant growth. So there are different types of plants that is uh, grown, uh, that can be grown by us. And the tolerant capacity of each plant is different. Like for example, the highly tolerant crop uh, can, crop can tolerate, uh, withstand a soil concentration up to 10 decisimen per meter, whereas uh, moderately tolerant crops can withstand up to 5 decisimen per meter. And a sensitive crop can, you know, uh, be reflected by the amount of concentration even at the rate of 2.5 decisimen per meter. The next one. This is a picture, you see, it's a salinized field. The left side, the right side of the guy or the man is all white, which shows that there is some kind of deposition, accumulation of soluble salts on the layer of the soil. Uh, next. Uh, yeah, this is a picture of water bonding. I have already explained, so I need to, uh, I need not go further. Uh, so, yeah, so these are some of the, you know, underlying points regarding drainage. What's happening globally? What is the effect of this poor drainage globe on the global scale? You know, 11% of the world's arable land has been uh, improved with some sort of drainage. And that 11th person comprises of 11% of the rented areas which is around 72 million hectare and 22% of the irrigated areas, that is 121 million hectare. And every year, there is a loss of 0 0.5 million hectare uh, of, uh, due because of this salinization. And that's a huge amount. Every year you see you're losing 0 0.5 million hectare and uh, the number of populations are keep on increasing so there is more pressure of increase in production but on the other hand we are lacking behind because of this salinization and if we don't take, uh, take care uh, properly in time we are going to use about in the next 25 years we have to invest about 900 us dollar uh, that will be a million 900 million us dollar that will be required to reclaim the soil already lost because of salinization. So how do we calculate how do we calculate uh, you know the different um, how much of the salt is deposited in the soil? I will just give a rough explanation, uh, uh, a calculation or an estimate to show you how much of the salt is deposited every year. Like supposedly, let's take, uh, for example, an irrigation water capacity, uh, irrigation soil with the quality, uh, which is of good quality, yes, which is of good quality. And even if it's of, of very good quality, they always contain some kind of uh, soluble salts. So let's take the concentration to be 0 0.3, 0 0.3 decisimen per meter. And so let's calculate how much of the salt is deposited in tons every year per hectare. So next slide. 
the next slide. This is the questions that are our policy. Yeah. No. Yeah, this one. So let's see. I have told you that we are going to irrigate the field at the rate of 12,000 meter mm per year. So when you convert it into uh, meter cube per hectare per year, volume wise, you'll see that it turns out to be 12, point, uh, 12 in the 10 to the power 3. So also similarly with salinity of irrigation water, when converted into tons per meter cube, it is 1.92 into 10 to the power minus 4. So all total salt brought into the soil is the uh, multiplication of the two, that is 2.3 ton per hectare per year. 2.3 hectare, which is 2,300 kg per hectare every year. Just imagine after, you know, after 10 or 5 years, Every year you are depositing 2,500 kg per, per hectare in uh, every year in your land. What will be the condition? You see, the reason why we are losing 0 0.5 million hectare every year. These are the components. I have written about the components of the drainage system because you see, when it comes to differentiation or comparison between two systems, that is, I'm going to compare mostly with irrigation, you need to know something in depth about the components or the, you know, the, the real meaning. You need to know about it. So I have just brought up some physical uh, differences to not down some physical differences. So we have the field drainage system, the main drainage system, and the outlet. And the field drainage system, uh, we have, uh, yes, this is the uh, uh, picture, a, a graph or um, image showing the different types of drainage. The small where it's written drain, they are the field drainage. They are the field drainage. And the place where it's written secondary drain, they are the main drainage. And also the place where it's written primary drain, they all, all together will form the main drainage system. And the uh, uh, spot where it's written, the pumping station will be considered as the outlet. In the field drainage system, you know, there are different types. There are not just one field different system, uh, you know, there's not just one pattern. There are lots of different types. It may be a surface drainage system or a subsurface drainage system and a tube wheel drainage system. And first two, that is the surface drainage system and the subsurface drainage system are considered uh, horizontal, whereas the, uh, the last one, that is the tube well, was co is considered as a vertical drainage system. So when it comes to surface draining si drainage system, it is just to remove the ponded water, mostly from the surface. For that, what we do is we grade the land, we make slops, and sometimes that is what farmers usually do. That is a kind of you know surface drainage. And in the subsurface drainage, so uh, in the subsurface drainage, it is slightly different because the drainage system will be in the root zone. So it will be at a depth of two meter to remove the excess water. There are different types. Here are some of the patterns which we can use to, uh, you know, install the subsurface drainage system. Like the random system, in random system, there is no particular pattern. Wherever there is ponded water, where there is water law condition, join them together into a common collector and then uh, remove, dispose it into a main outlet. The other one, that is the, the other one, sir, uh, next one, yeah. No, 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 the, the one next, yes, this one. Parallel grid system. In the parallel grid system, uh, you see, 
everything is buried so uh, so much in a cemetery the field drains are parallel to each other and the main collector that is a kind of main drainage system is perpendicular to the field drain so they hold a very good symmetry and that is the parallel grid system in the herringbone system it is uh, like in the parallel grid the uh, the field drains are parallel to each other but the difference is that instead of being perpendicular with the collector they are converged towards the collector in the shape of a v in the v shape you know when visually seen they look like the bone of a fish so that is why it is said as the herringbone uh, system and in the tube well drainage Tube well drainage is also from the subsurface, and the subsurface drainage that is also subsurface. Everything sounds similar, but no, they are uh, different, mainly because of the depth from where the water is taken out. Like uh, in the tube well, there are lots of tubes, they are interconnected, and uh, when they pump out the excess water, they are then removed, disposed of into an open open canal or on or an open drain. So, at how much depth is this tube well? In the initial, in the subsurface, it was only two meter, but now in the tube well, the depth is twenty to thirty meter, which is in the aquifer region. So that's about the. Uh, uh, different field drainage system in the main drainage system in the main drainage system we don't need to consider much things uh, next slide we don't need to uh, see much of the thing because it consists just several collector drains and a main drain so they are uh, they are almost same they are just a common collecting point before uh, letting it out into an outlet in the outlet, in the outlet, these are the end point, end point of a drainage system from where the water is discharged into a river, lake, or sea. So it may be of two types. One is the gravity outlet, and the other one is the pumping outlet. In the gravity outlet, we see that it is mostly because of the gravitational force. The outlet is at higher level, whereas the uh, outer water bodies where you are going to dispose of is at a lower level. It is reversed in case of pumping station. The outlet is little slightly lower than that of the external water body. So we need to fix a pump to remove the dispose of the water. So that's the difference. Here the picture shows a pumping station. Like they are uh, fitted with uh, pumps, different types of pumps to remove the excess water and uh, yes this picture this is a gravity outlet structure here you see in the picture uh, the outlet pipes are at higher level than the external water bodies where you are going to dispose so this is an example of a gravitational uh, gravity outlet structure here it's just uh you know you can solve help me solve this uh question like you have to just indicate which section is which type of drainage so a section does it fall under a uh, natural drainage natural drainage system or a man-made drainage system similarly with section b and section c and also with section d you can help me solve this at the end of the session So these are, you know, there are different aspects we have to see to figure out the difference between uh, irrigation and drainage. Drainage is at the end of the pipeline. Here it says drainage is at the end of the pipeline. It means the physical position. There are lots of activities taking place in, this, uh, in the agricultural land. But finally, when all the activities are done, they get, you know, 
collected in the drain system. So drainage is the end point of all the activities taking place in uh, agriculture land. So it is set at the end of the pipeline. You know, there are lots of problems regarding uh, agreement and enforcement of rules and regulations in case of drainage. In drainage, uh, in irrigation, it's like if I am uh, agreeing to uh, fit on an irrigation system, then that's fine. You can go for it. But in case of, you know, in case of uh, drainage, you cannot do so. Because in drainage, in drainage, lots of need, people need to be, you know, talk uh, uh, to be collaborated. They need uh, lots of stakeholders, then financial for financial support. The people have to be agree have to agree with the uh, construction and installation of the drainage. So it needs the uh, agreement agreeing capacity of lots of. Uh, users like for example the lakhiwadi uh, drainage uh, pilot area in rajasthan the uh, the construction the completion of the uh, uh, you know the drainage system was hindered and it was much delayed because the people were not agreeing to the disposal point they wanted to do the drainage, but they did not agree with the disposal point. So it, it, was, uh, it was some kind of problem, and because of which they had to delay the project. In a small scale and irrigated agriculture, drainage should always be a joint venture. You see, I am a farmer. I am a farmer. I own a land. The next, uh, the next land owns. Uh, belongs to another person meri jab wo jo bagal mein rehte hai bagal ka neighbor phil jo hai usne agree nahi kiya ki mujhe farming karna hai mujhe drainage nahi karna hai usne bol diya to possible nahi hai drainage karna possible nahi hai usi area pe so you have to make everyone uh, agree to the point of drainage क्योंकि ये जो जमीनी पानी का जो बहाव है उन लोगों को थोड़ी ना पता है कि मेरा जमीन इधर खत्म होता है मेरा जमीन की सीमा इधर पे है उस उस तरफ मेरी नेबर्स का है वो ड्रेनेज ये प्रोजेक्ट के अंदर नहीं आना चाहता है उन लोगों को थोड़ी ना पता है सो यू हैव टू मेक एवरीवन एग्री बिकॉज इट्स अ नेचर थिंग एंड नो वन कैन make the nature bias but uh, next point is about the next point is about the boundaries of drainage units usually do not coincide with the boundaries of irrigation unit if you want to construct a drainage system you have to mod modify the whole system of irrigation unit and uh, besides that you know the boundary uh, the irrigation department usually uh, undertakes work related to irrigation but there is no such centralized department to take up works related to drainage sometimes the cada that is the canal uh, canal drainage uh, canal development authority take up some kind, such kind of drainage work but not always Next is a disposal of water create disposal of drainage water creates offsite externalities. I have also given you an example of the Lakhiwadi uh, drainage uh, drainage project, where the people did not uh, you know agree with the disposal point. This is because when we dispose drainage water, the water is not so good. Like it contains lots of chemicals. Like it has lots of uh, negative effects on the surrounding environment. So they do not agree with the disposal there's some kind of problem with the disposal and the high cost investment uh, investment in irrigation whereas in drainage it requires only about 10 to 30 percent of the original investment required in uh, irrigation so it's quite low but yes the difference is that in irrigation it will be uh, immediate response, but in drainage, even though they require low investment, the 
time of uh, benefit, getting benefits is a long-term benefit. You know, it's a long-term. You will get the benefit after a long time. You see, uh, there is a saying, irrigation is the need of the are or the present, whereas drainage is the problem of the future. So it's well said. Drainage is of long term. So we never uh, consider it important. Last one is the reuse of drainage, drainage water. We can use the drainage water, but after, uh, for using the drainage water, it depends on the quality of the irrigation water. If the irrigation water you are supplying is a very good quality, then the percentage of how much drainage water you are going to reuse depends on that percentage of irrigation water uh, quality. So they are independent. This is a video which shows about the installation of the subsurface drainage system. So let's have a look on this video together. Uh, sir, uh, please play this video. Can you please play this video? Hello. Uh, can you please play, play this video? Where is Link, ma'am? Uh, can you please play this video? This is a video. Hello. No, this is not a video. Please provide your link. Uh, no, this is supposed to be a video. No, no, ma'am. This is the only picture. Okay, whatever. Uh, okay, whatever. Let's move forward. There are lots of videos in the YouTube. Uh, you can just have a look about the drainage system insulation. You can just have a look. Uh, okay, next one. Ma'am, uh, if you have any link of video. Yeah, I do have. Okay, please provide in chat box. Okay. I'll do that. Uh, uh, then... Okay, you can fast forward this slide, move on to the next slide. Yeah, this is the main uh, topic I want to highlight today. Points why you, we should go for artificial drainage. Drainage projects, you know, they are based on uh, every food production is a resource based. So this drainage protects the resource, that is land resource based for food production that is lane. How does it protect? Uh, next slide. How does it protect is in arid and semi-arid in arid and can you please fast forward the slide? Can you pass forward the slide? Okay, in, I think uh, there's a problem with the uh, hearing. Okay, when there is, you know, uh, in arid and semi-arid reasons, this drainage uh, controls the water logging condition. Water logging condition, uh, and salinization problem that occur because of uh, because of poor drainage or uh, because the salt water that is brought in by the irrigation water they get accumulated and some kind of salinization problem occur. So this drainage avoids such kind of problems. Similarly, in the humid regions, in humid regions, what happened is. Can you fast forward the slide? Oh my God. Okay, thank you. In the humid and the subhumid reasons, it removes the excess water. Uh, 
because some crops are sensitive to water lock condition. So uh, some crops are, uh, you know, sensitive to water lock condition and the risk of crop failure and increases, uh, risk of crop failure also increases. But when there is drainage, it reduces the risk of crop failure and increases farmers' freedom of crop choice and the varieties. You can grow any type of crop, sensitive or non-sensitive crop, you can grow any type of crops. And in the temperate regions, it enables the reclamation of the waterlogged areas and optimizes growing condition for the crops. Temperate regions, what happens is after a snowfall, the snowfall becomes fr frozen on the surface. But when they start melting, it causes waterlogged condition. It causes water lock condition, hampering uh, the crop growth in the good weather. So such kind of problems can be solved because of drainage. And uh, in the Mesopotamia, there is you know, a total global scale, arable land and a permanent crop area. They are spanned in 1,371 million hectares in 1961. It was increased to 1,500, 1,535 in 2009. But unfortunately, they are expected to reduce in 2060 because of the increasing urbanization. So to avoid all this problem and to keep up with a good production to uh, fit the ever-growing population, this drainage should play its own part. And the Mesopotamia civilization, you might have also heard of this civilization. In the civilization, they said that if salinization is not considered taken seriously, then they will act like a time bomb, which is ready to explode any time in the agriculture scene. Well, I think it's a, very, uh, it's a good saying, I should say, yeah. yeah. I already told that in, uh, in the world, around 10 to 16 percent area is already affected by uh, poor drainage or salinization, salinized soil, and uh, around 0 0.5 meter per hectare, million per hectare of land is losing every year. Uh, these are some of the conditions. So we, uh, even if there is such condition, the government have tried to install some drainage infrastructure, but still, irrigation is far ahead of drainage. I don't know what's the main reason, but I think lack of awareness also play a role in this lacking, uh, lacking behind of drainage system. Uh, next slide. Yes, installation of the drainage system. When we install a drainage system, there is lower water level and the uh, soil becomes drier. And eventually it will help in the crop response and the changes in the farming system by affecting the soil physical, chemical, and hydrological properties. Uh, next slide. Yeah, we can move on to the next slide. Yes. So in what way this drainage increases yield and rural income? There are lots of evidences to prove that it helps in the better uh, yield of the crop. Like for example, you can take the example of this two uh, of few places, few projects, like in Egypt, because uh, they install subsurface drainage almost in all the lands. And because of that, it resulted in 30% decrease in the depth of the groundwater level, a 30, 35 to 50% de decrease in areas affected by soil salinity and increase of all the crops beyond expectation. Yes, a response of each crop varies though, but overall there was increase in yield. The Rajat project and also the HOP Haryana project they uh, sought an increased yield of 19 to 28 percent, 19 and between 19 and 28 percent. And because of this, such an installation, 
uh, within a payback year of four to seven years, we could get a cost benefit ratio of 1.3 to 2.9, 2.9, and every year internal uh, return was between 18 to 35 percent. So also in this uh, some uh, some other projects like the Kushab, the Ford, Swabi, uh, in this projects there was an in decrease in abandoned land uh, considerably and uh, cropping intensity was increased by 20 percent. Next slide. And uh, yes, this is a table uh, graph showing the relation of water table and the crop production. When there is very high water table, there is low yield. And uh, when the water table uh, optimizes, the yield also increases. So that is the relation between the two. There is also an example. Uh, next slide. This is also a, a table showing how drainage system can benefit in the crop yield, uh, fertilized soil or non-fertilized soil. Uh, there is almost, I think, double times yield difference uh, when there is a proper drainage. Land productivity. Land productivity is very important. The fertility of the soil, uh, plays a great role in increasing the crop yield. But how does this drainage sustain land productivity? Every year with irrigation water, lots of salt are deposited. Even if you say that, oh, that's a very good irrigation water, it wouldn't affect the soil. No, it's, there's no such thing. Every irrigation water somehow contains some amount of soluble salt. There is an example, a comparison between two uh, drainage uh, drain area. One is in Egypt and in one is in Pakistan. 86% of the irrigated lands were drained in Egypt, whereas only 32% of the irrigated lands were drained in Pakistan. The final result or outcome, we see that in Egypt, irrigated lands there was no much difference in the, you know, uh, soil deposition. It was almost as same as before, which means that the leaching efficiency is very high and the drainage system in the Nile Valley are adequate to keep the equilibrium uh, soil salinity. But there was slight difference in case of the irrigated lands in Pakistan. Only around 50% of the salt brought in by the Indus Valley, the Indus River, were drained off to the Arabian Sea. And because of which, 35 to 40% of the irrigated areas are salt affected, among which 6% were moderately affected and 8% were severely affected. Uh, so next slide. Uh, we might have seen lots of open drains in your locality also. Gande nala to bohot sare dekhe honge. Nali jo hai, bohot sare dekhe honge. So, besides agriculture, not only in agriculture, drainage can also, drainage infrastructure can also help us drain off the excess water from the urban and the industrial areas. And uh, uh, to install such a thing, we need to increase the, uh, the capacity of the drainage system by 12 to 18 percent. Because in dry season, we often see that the water uh, quality uh, deteriorates affecting the water bodies in the surrounding areas. So sufficient drainage will lead to a decrease in toxification, pollution, and the other water quality related problems. And this drainage acting as savior of human lives. Humans are considered, you know, one of the most powerful beings, but still this drainage can save us. Uh, there is an old Chinese saying, uh, water, the water can bear the boat and swallow it at the same time. 
It means that uh, with difference in attitude, the water can be helpful and also have a negative impact. So the Chinese were already aware that during the flooded condition, this drainage can help. So we need to find a solution. So in India, totally, uh, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yes. In India, 40 million hectares of land, roughly one eighth of India, of the country's uh, area is prone to flood in the monsoon season. All the irrigation development to overcome water shortages in the dry season can create water logging problems when drainage is insufficient. And this water quality effect, if, uh, if poor drainage con conditions affecting the water quality can be a threat to the humans. And thus effective drainage is very important for controlling such contamination. Drainage services improving health condition. Yeah, it. I think uh, this is quite important uh, to for a healthy living. For example, in the sixth century, the Greeks and the Romans were already aware of the fact that uh, certain waterborne diseases can be avoided by proper drainage by removing the stagnant water. Dolet in the twentieth century, the you know the uh, the southern states of USA and uh, Central America started uh, started con installing the subsurface drainage uh, subsurface drainage system to avoid uh, the vector borne diseases. Similarly, in the death irrigation scheme, such results were founded, and they found out that uh, these proper drainage systems can help. Uh, you know, uh, can help the uh, in the better management of uh, waterborne diseases more than uh, more than the me uh, medical or the chemical measures. So there should be proper implementation of this drainage system uh, to make it more useful. And I think uh, yes, next this picture will help you easily. Uh, see what a poor drainage system and a, you know a well drained system looks like. Poor drainage system in India, there are lots of such places. Uh, what do you think? Why the even though the uh, cases of Corona is very COVID cases is very high in India, why do you think that the red uh, mortality is red mortality rate is quite low? I think it's because of the immunity because we are used to the poor drainage system. And uh, uh, the Western countries are so like were so maintained, so tidy, and so when the immunity is quite low for them because they are not exposed to such pollution. That is kind of jokes, not so serious. Okay, then drainage converts the uh, quality of conserves the quality of water. In a well-operated uh, drainage scheme, the leading fraction will be around 15 to 30 percent, depending on the soil type. And uh, extra, uh, yeah, like we are using the water to drain off the soluble salts. But if there is no proper drainage system, the soluble salts, along with the excess water, will get in into the uh, groundwater level. And when it goes to the groundwater level or to the surrounding water bodies, they get polluted. So uh, this drainage uh, can help from, uh, can save you from the negative impact of leaching of nutrients and pesticides from the agriculture lane. Uh, sorry, next. I have noted down lots of you know points regarding why drainage is important and uh, what are the advantages we can get from a proper drainage practice but still the farmers are not practicing it there is some kind of you know gap between the uh, technology and the farmers uh, level it is mostly because need for drainage and the operation of the 
drainage systems are usually less visible than the need for an operation of the irrigation system. And yes, the second one is the lack of awareness. And the cost, you know, implementation, maintenance, who will take the responsibility? That's also a question. And uh, large, large drainage systems, especially the larger ones, uh, than a farmer, uh, they have an impact on more than just uh, farmers. Just not just one farmer uh, cannot do a drainage cannot do a drainage system proper drainage system. It needs the consultation and coordination of lots of people. So the cooperation is also a problem. Uh, next. We have learned about the general advantages and what is happening around the world. But what's happening in India? What is the situation in India? India, you, you, there are lots of uh, large canal irrigation projects in India. And around 1,200 uh, medium and large uh, irrigation, pro, uh, large irrigation uh, systems exist in India and recently in the last 50 years our irrigations our groundwater uses have also increased leading to a condition leading to an increase in irrigated lands so now overall India has the world's largest gross irrigated area with 77 million hectare out of the 348 million hectare uh, worldwide irrigated area. So it's a very quite uh, portion, good, uh, quite big portion. Now, uh, people have started realizing that this at a time of, at the time of the Green Revolution, if much focus was also, would have been given to the drainage projects like we have given to the irrigation system, the situation we are facing now, that is loss of land, would not have been there. So we say that prevention is better than cure. What you are doing, what we are doing now, we are sitting at home uh, doing this online, online uh, workshop, mainly as a prevention to the uh, pandemic, and the, uh, pandemic um, situation around. So it is always said prevention is better than cure. But recently, in 19, of recent, in 1985, the importance of this drainage were recognized. Around 3.95 to uh, 16 million hectare of the waterlock area, and from 3.3 to 10.9 million hectare of the saline area, uh, were found in India. So it's a quite, if we could have grown crops in this area, then there would have been more production. So there comes a need to solve this problem. So the government uh, recognizing the needs, they uh, have several field based research projects uh, on drainage and reclamation of the agricultural lands in the states of Rajasthan, Haryana, Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, in collaboration with the governments of Netherlands and Canada, and the funding from the World Bank. So that was the scenario. And they found out a policy. Uh, next slide. So the government, uh, the government of India in 2002 found out a policy, the National Water Policy, which has a specific provision to undertake drainage measures, both in scheme level as well as at uh, field scale in all the irrigation projects. After which, we were able to recover around 1.39 uh, million hectare, comprising of 1.3 million hectare of sodic soils, 0 0.04 million hectare of the saline sodic soils, and around 0 0.05 million hectare of the waterlogged soils. But it is not enough. It is not enough. In India, how many families are there? who depends on farming. There are 103 million families in India that depends on farming, which is distributed to 62,500 villages, which is quite a huge number. And I don't think 
just the government schemes in few uh, states will be enough to comprehend uh, to comprehend that uh, this drainage has been practiced in all the all over the country. So it still failed to reach the mass. It is our own part now to play uh, as a good agriculturist, learning in an institution to help the farmers uh, know more about this drainage. So I have also put up at the last uh, at the last part of this slide what you can do, how you can help the farmer. You can just go and meet a farmer. I uh, then explain something that you have, even though I've, I have might not have explained good to you, you might at least say something regarding drainage to them and uh, explain to at least one of them. Hope in this way a chain will be created and one day many of the farmers will get to know about this drainage practice. I hope you were all with me during all these times, even though the lectures were monotonous, even only me explaining, it might not be a very good uh, discussion, but I hope you could get some point. Yes, conclusion. I would not give the conclusion. The conclusion is up to you. Now you should decide, uh, is drainage as important as irrigation? It is up to you to decide that, and you can give your own conclusion because for me the explanation part the discussion part in that my own views and conclusion have already been uh, you know embedded in between them uh, so these are the few of the questions uh, like just to test how much of you uh, have absorbed the lesson uh, only few of them uh, yes uh, next one. I think it's almost the end of the slide. The, the farmers help. Yeah, it's almost the end of the slide. Uh, next. These are a few references. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is what I have. Uh, I have been wanting to, uh, you know, share with you all. This is this batch only. It's not a very, uh, you know, uh, very scientific topic. But it's just a discussion. What I know, I'm sharing with you all so that everybody gets equal knowledge, like uh, getting equal status of drainage to uh, irrigation. Uh, sorry about my, you know, my language. English is not my first language. So I, will, I hope you will pardon me for the mistakes that I've made. Thank you all. Thank you.